Hey guys, Robert Dreisel here. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're going to be uh, expl uh, I'm gonna explain to you guys like a, te uh, a technique, a concept that I like to teach a lot of my students, how to practice your submissions without squeezing, which is a very common problem, right? Your your student learns how to apply a guillotine or a head and arm, and the first thing they think is they, as soon as they connect that hands on their head and arm, and they want to squeeze, right? And they're like, the squeeze is a submission. And the squeeze really has to be seen as a bonus. It's the last thing you should do. I'm not against squeezing, but it, does, it, it probably, if you're squeezing, there's a good chance you don't have the technique really adjusted. So most of the uh, of the technique is gonna come from not only adjustment, but like using your body together to finish, right? So I'm gonna talk about a number of different situations, a number of different situ uh, submissions, where you're gonna practice without connecting your hands, so you learn the true mechanics of the move, and you maximize the technique and your body work, and the squeezing is the last thing you do. So one of the easiest examples of what I'm talking about here is when uh, Joe's on the ground here, head and arms, have your head over here, your feet that way. Right, so this is what we're gonna practice this. Yeah, is whenever I'm, go I'm going for my head and arm, I want the focus to be on the adjustment, not so on the, sque the squeezing, like I said, is the last thing I'm gonna do. So I'm not even gonna connect my hands. The important thing on the head and arm is I'm gonna bite the outside of his neck with the inside of my elbow. So instead of sliding your arm in, whenever you slide that arm in, you leave a little gap between his neck and my elbow. See that little space right there? And no matter how much I squeeze, I can't make up for that little space. So instead of sliding the arm in, I'm gonna lift his head and I position it on the inside of my elbow, right? So that's gonna be my head and arm right there. That bite right there. And now what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna let my weight sink into my right arm. And I just look, so, and I let gravity do its work. So, Joe will tell you it's a very tight choke. You guys saw my hands were not connected at all, but he tapped right away. And the reason I like to explain things like this is this is the common question I get when, when I, I show a head and arm, right? Rob, how do you connect your hands? Like this, like this? palm on the ground, like they feel like a million different ways of connecting your, uh, their hands. And my answer always is it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter how you connect your hands. What matters is that the inside of your elbow is tight around the, the outside of his neck, meaning the noose is tight around the neck, so there's not a lot of sp a space for blood flow, right? So that bite right there is really what I'm after. So that adjustment is the key to the move. Whether you want to connect your hands or not really doesn't matter. You can, and I'm not saying you shouldn't, the squeeze does help. But once again, the squeezing is a bonus. It's not the actual technique. I'll show that again. So when I get to my head and arm, I'm gonna raise the head and I bite. I get my inside of my elbow as close as possible as neck, and I'm gonna plank on my right shoulder. My body weight falls on that right shoulder. That's the other thing. The weight distribution here is very important, right? Where's my weight go? It go even? No. There's a subtle little shift there. So my weight goes on between my shoulder and my bicep. That's what's gonna sink my weight into his neck. It's gonna make the choke very tight and that's why he taps. Notice that I did that with one, one arm. That's how you should practice. In fact, when you're teaching this move, in case you're a teacher, uh, a coach, you, you wanna teach your student not to connect their hands when they're practicing so they learn to use the mechanics of the move because the second you teach them how to squeeze, trust me, I've been teaching for, what, 20 years now? The second you teach them how to connect their hands, they forget about everything else you talk about. All they think about is this right here because this is easy. It doesn't take a lot of skill to learn how to do that, right? So that's all your student is gonna focus on. So don't let them connect their hands in the beginning so they learn the mechanics of the move. Another example, rear naked choke. It's the same thing, same principle. So if I have Joe's back, I have hook, hook, and back. Instead of like teaching them how to squeeze or get that, and they're relying on their arms, Teach them how to adjust the arm around the neck. Same thing, I bite the inside of the, uh, about it, with the inside of my elbow, I bite the neck. And notice that when I fall, and I'm just gonna turn this, I'm gonna fall on my right now. Notice that when I, I'm ready to finish, I'm gonna do a number of things here, but I'm not gonna squeeze, I'm not gonna connect my hands. I'm gonna push his head forward with my head. There's a little motion of my head pushing his head forward, like as if it were a triangle, and I'm pulling his head into the triangle. I'm doing that with the head. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kick both my feet back my feet are gonna go back and I'm gonna drive my hips forward into the, his lower back. And at the same time, I'm gonna arch with my chest. I'm gonna push his shoulder blades with my chest. I'm doing all those four things at the same time. So his head comes forward, because I'm pushing, my feet go back, my hips come forward, and my chest goes into his shoulder blades all at the same time, okay? So when you're in a fight, right, once again, I'm not suggesting you do this, but the practice to learn the mechanics of rear naked choke this is how you should practice so you don't get addicted to squeezing, which is what most people want to do all the time. So one more time. Like once, if I can adjust by biting his neck with the inside of my elbow, it's always going to be tighter. Hooks go back, hips go forward. I'm going to drive my chest with his shoulder blades, and I'm going to push his head forward with my head. And then whether you connect your hands or how you connect your hands, which in this case is going to be gable grip or a traditional rear naked choke, they're both correct, but you shouldn't count on the squeeze. 
I'll give you guys another example of what I'm talking about. The guillotine. So the last two would actually work without connecting your hands. The guillotine wouldn't, but it's the same principle. In the guillotine, you do have to connect your hands. But the idea is to teach your student how to maximize the technique and not rely on the squeeze. So when I attack, let's say, an open guard guillotine, right? And I get to here. One very important thing is that I'm always covering the back of his neck with my shoulders. So if my shoulder is back, his head pops out very easily, right? So throughout the sequence, even when I go down, if I'm pulling guard or whatever, I can't let that happen, right? It's a very common mistake. The shoulder's got to stay high. I should be covering the back of his neck with my shoulder. I'm going to have an open guard guillotine here. Notice that when I go on my side, that's what's going to create the pressure. I don't go flat on my back. My left leg wraps around his lower back, almost like I'm stepping on the far hip, and I keep my shoulder up the whole time. I didn't connect my hands. Now, this is the one choke I wouldn't recommend you doing with one hand ever. You know, the, other one, the other two can work without connecting your hands. This one really doesn't, but it's a very good way of teaching your student how to use the mechanics of the move, right? Digging the wrist into the neck, covering the back of the neck with the shoulder, staying on your side, right? And getting that, the, 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 the guillotine, the choke, without having to squeeze at all, all by position, okay? One more time. So wrap tight, my other hand is free. Right. Just by simply using the mechanics of the move, right? Now, what other situations can we talk about where uh, I apply, uh, the, I use the, the body mechanics and not the squeeze, right? The heel hook, case in point, this is very common, right? You see guys trying to, it's all about the arms. And don't get me wrong, the arms are a bit part of it, but there's more to a heel hook than just squeezing or just like trying to break your opponent's foot off by using your upper body, right? There's more to the mechanics of it. So lay down, let's go. Honey, hold for me, Jake. Uh, Joe, this thing out. So when I go into my honey hole here, for example, right? Like if I connect my hands here, and I, yeah, I don't have to do a lot other than just rotating my upper body, right? But one thing I like to do when I'm teaching this to my students is to teach them how to pinch the toes underneath my armpit, okay? Not too close to the end because you don't want it to slide off, but enough to expose the heel so the heel is wide open. Notice his knee is bent, okay? You guys can't see right now, but I'm engaging my glutes. The reason he's got his hand ready like that, he already feels it. I'm engaging my glutes when I do this. There's a 45 degree angle here. His leg is not straight, and I'm applying the pressure with just my body, right? Once again, the idea here is not that you shouldn't you connect your hands, but to teach your students and teach yourself how to use your entire body to finish a submission and not just rely on squeezing. So once again, I bite the heel, okay? I expose his, I expose his heel up. I'm engaging my glutes, this is very important. It makes it harder for him to escape if my glutes aren't relaxed. If I'm engaging the glutes and I'm pinching, squeezing my knees together the entire time. Then it's just the mechanics of the submission, and then he's stopping. So, uh, I'll give you one more example, right? A straight foot lock. Uh, give me the straight foot lock here. So I go for a straight foot lock. Same thing, for the longest time, whenever I got a straight foot lock, people would go, how do you connect your hands, Rob? You hold the collar, you connect the hands. Do you go like a, like a Kimura on the ankle? And I, for like, throughout my, my jiu-jitsu career, I had different answers to that question. And so I realized my, it's not about how you connect, it's about the bite, it's about the adjustment, it's about how you use your body with a straight foot lock. So it's not that you shouldn't connect your hands once again, it's just that it's not that important. It's mostly you know, the coordination of your body that's gonna make for the foot lock. So now I'm not even gonna connect my hands, I'm gonna finish them. So I'm gonna keep my right hand on my belly. The important thing here is that I make his toes disappear. So you can see his toes, but right there I'm gonna make that the shoe disappear underneath my armpit. Okay? And what's gonna happen here is I'm applying my body weight to apply the pressure. So I have my straight foot lock here, I pull my, I have my, my arm back. And that was effortless, like I'm not holding my breath, I'm not squeezing, but he'll tell you. His butt's coming off the ground because there's a lot of pressure on that foot, right? You'll break his foot here. And there's no squeeze whatsoever. So instead of killing yourself and trying to figure out like how to finish a full lock, like which grip you're using, maximize the mechanics. In this case right here, once again, I want his legs slightly bent, almost like a 45. I want this foot off the ground. I want my knees pinched. The most important thing here is the bite, how I bite the end of his foot underneath my armpit. So I think about smashing the end of his foot, his toes, squeezing him with my armpit. Notice that I'm not attacking the Achilles. I'm attacking the middle of his foot. It's a different way of attacking the straight foot lock. If I go here, I'm attacking the Achilles. You're gonna have to squeeze to finish. It's not wrong. There's a lot more energy involved. I've always liked to do like close to the end of the foot. Depending on the length of his leg in relation to your height, you might have to move further back or stay closer to his hip, depending on how, uh, how tall he is, right? So right now I'm right where I'm supposed to be. I'm gonna pull my elbow back. Look, no squeeze, I'm just gonna let gravity do its thing. And he's tapping. 
Right, so why do I recommend, and you can think of other submissions too. This is just like, I just gave you four, five examples there. But uh, you know, you can think of other ways of doing this. The triangle is another one, like finish the triangle without pulling the head. So you learn how to properly adjust the triangle versus just trying to pull the head down and rely on that to be your submission. Uh, the idea is to teach your body how to you work together, right? Like we, th we have this obsession with the arms when it comes to submission because the arms are where we're most coordinated. Now throughout your life, you're moving objects, you're, you're doing stuff with your arms. So your arms are very, very coordinated compared to the rest of your body. Your legs you use for walking and sitting down and laying down mostly. There's not a lot going on with your legs in daily life. Your legs are just not as coordinated, right? Your hips, same thing. Your torso, we don't know how to use that. So jiu-jitsu teaches you how to use your body in, in, in coordination, right? That's what jiu-jitsu, that's what technique is. It's just using your body in coordination, like the whole body, not just parts of your body. So you gotta beat that out of your head where your arms are doing all the work by itself. I don't recommend that, I don't like it. Um, I think that a, a very smart way of teaching submissions is exactly what I just I taught you guys. Use your body, don't rely on the squeeze, don't rely on your arms so much. Use the arms as a bonus only when you're live. Hey guys, stay tuned, we got a new product coming out soon. It's about mindset for competition, mindset for getting better at jiu-jitsu. We're not ready yet, but stay tuned, keep watching the channel. We're gonna have some new announcements coming up soon. You guys are gonna love it. Hey guys, there's a little caveat here regarding uh, the choke, right? Like, and and I, I say this a lot in my seminars and my classes. It's a very important thing. No one ever taught me, but I think it's one of the most important things regarding choke. And everyone who's teaching a choke should talk about this right away. A choke is very different from a submission or a, a heel hook submission or wrist lock submission, for example, right? Because like I said, the wrist lock, it's a very short lever. That's why normally people get caught in wrist locks. They don't tap, they verbalize it. They say tap, right? Because it's a verbal uh, tap submission. Uh, they, it's, it's a lot faster than actually physically tapping your opponent. And the reason they do that is there's a very short lever. <clears throat> there's not a lot of time to tap. Same thing happens with the heel hook. It's a very short lever, unlike an arm bar where you have plenty of time to tap. So my point is when you're talking about a choke, it, it is not about being in a hurry on, on finishing. It's about being patient. You gotta be very patient on the choke. What do I mean by that? When you start the pressure, you should never start at 100%. Because if you start at 100%, the truth of the matter is if I ask you to squeeze or run at 100%, you could probably do it for like six, seven seconds and then you're gonna start slowing down, right? So because a, your opponent may not tap in six, seven seconds, you're gonna run out of steam and then after doing that right there with your choke, you're gonna have to take a break. And after taking a break, he's also taking a break by the way, you're gonna go again, but now your 100% is really 90%. It's no longer 100, right? Then you squeeze again, and now you're gonna get tired. He didn't tap either, so you're gonna take another break, and he's also taking a break. And then you're gonna squeeze again all you got, but now your 90% is 80%, and he still hasn't tapped. So long story short, this is what's happening when you, your opponent escapes the choke, and he hasn't tapped, and you are exhausted because you've been squeezing the whole time, and, and you're not getting what you need. Like, how are you tired? He's the one in the choke, and you're the one who's exhausted. And the reason why this is happening is because you guys always start the pressure with 100%. So you're starting up here, and from here you can only go where? You can only go down. So things for him get easier and easier. What you should be doing when you're choking is starting low. Now, when I say low, I don't recommend 0%, nothing. Why? Because if you're at zero, what happens is it's very easy for him to get out of the choke. Like you just like shake your arms off, right? So I normally recommend my students start around 40 to 50% because it's enough pressure to begin to choke, right? But you can't really get out. It's not enough to get him to tap, but I can keep the pressure at 40% for a minute or two if I have to because I'm not exhausting my, my, uh, my, my arms, right? I'm not squeezing. So I always start a choke at 40, 50%. 55, 60, right? I give an example of this fight, and then by the time you're at 70, they're tapping, and you, and you haven't really used a lot of energy because you're not putting 100% right away. And it's because the build that prevents the blood flow. So even at 50, 60% of pressure, there is, you're, you're cutting the blood flow from the choke. So you all, the choke can only go up, is my point. It can never do that. It can never, like every time it goes down, he takes a break and you get tired. So always up, always consistent pressure. So you should plan, almost like budget your energy when you're going for a choke. Measure where your arms are at, how much energy you have left. Start with approximately 40 to 50% and then make your way up. I'll give you an example, very uh, interesting. Like this, this fight happened maybe six, seven years ago. Uh, Damien Mai and Rick's story. And he had a very, Damien had like not a great rear naked choke on Rick's story. And you can see he's not worried about it, right? But like a minute in, you can see he started panicking. He's like, Damien was like smart enough to keep that pressure consistent. So he didn't start at 100. You know, he had the whole round on his favor. So he started the pressure at approximately maybe 40, 50%. And then he made his way up all the way to whatever it was, 
when Rick Story tapped after maybe like a minute or two having the choke in. And if you watch that fight, it was not a good choke in the beginning. But at some point, his nose started to bleed because the pressure was so consistent that even though it wasn't choking in the beginning, towards the end, it was choking. That's how he won that fight. Uh, so just an, an example, and this, you know, some of you are more experienced. You probably know this in the gym. It's the same thing, right? When the choke is consistent, they, you normally get what you want. If you put 100% into it right away, it doesn't work. So I'm going to go over that, that uh, head and arm one more time, the rear naked choke and the guillotine one more time, and try to emphasize that aspect of the choke as well. Okay. So if I uh, have a head and arm on Joe, lay down. So once again, the emphasis is going to be on the right. I'm going to try to put less weight on Joe, but I'm going to be very consistent with the weight spread. I'm just going up probably 40% here. There's no squeeze. I'm just letting the weight do, the gravity do its work. Okay. The idea is to slowly increase the pressure. Look, and, and even if I hand had my hands connected, I wouldn't even stronger with my hands connected. But the buildup is what creates the choke, right? So let's say with the rear naked choke, for example. Let's do the other side. Look, it's a one-arm choke. This time, I'm not even going to use my hip. I'm just going to use my arm and head. So this is not a realistic situation, but it makes the case of how like little pressure can make the choke, right? With no energy, 30%. 40%, 50%, barely made it to 60%, right? The blood flow, even I'm at 60%, it's only going one way, it doesn't go both ways. So you are choking your opponent, which is another important point when you're going for a choke is that you always want to be not only just, not just patient about it, but you want to start the pressure as soon as possible. So if you had a guillotine from standing, you want to start the pressure before you hit the ground. You don't want to get the guillotine, jump close guard, and then start the pressure. No, you start the pressure the second you connect your hands on that guillotine, right? Because the more time you have to build that up, the sooner this guy will tap, okay? Let's try the, uh, uh, the guillotine now. Same idea, right? Just do it on this side. So if I'm in here, the consistency of the choke is what's gonna make the choke. Look at my right, I'm just completely free. 30%, 40%. 50%, yeah, okay. So right now, you know, obviously we're not fighting the fight. He might take longer taps, he's gonna resist more. Um, but just be patient, be consistent. That's how you get the choke. This is not like a joint lock. Joint locks are completely different. They're gonna tap on the spot. Joint lock, you can go 100% right away. There's no buildup. Choke is a different animal, gotta be patient. But again, choke is king, right? You can always break someone's arm. Maybe they don't tap, they keep fighting. Choke, you put them to sleep. You can't beat that. Hey guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends. It's always a pleasure to share some of my experience in jujitsu with you guys. Uh, if you have suggestions on things that you guys would like to learn about, things that think that you guys feel that are missing in the jujitsu community, please leave a comment below. Let us know what you would like to learn. I'll be happy to share that experience with you guys. <laughs>